Hi everybody, it's Steve on the Goober Brew. Today we're going to work on some graphics for our arcade cabinet using Photoshop. Last time you watched me putting the arcade machine together and I also showed you our graphics that we have, which is here. And I also told you earlier that um, this panel that we built for those graphics only has three buttons and one of our viewers recommended that we have at least six buttons here for each side, for each play. So, you know, I re redesigned the uh, play area, which is here, and we added in, you know, three more buttons down below. But now these graphics don't fit that anymore, so I'm gonna straighten that out today. Um, now that I've got this cut, I just need to go ahead and make those graphics in Photoshop. And I thought, since I was doing it anyway, I would go ahead and record it and show you some of the techniques and ways that I've used um, to use Photoshop to make a main cabinet um, display for the artwork similar to this. So if you're ready to get started, let's get started. Okay, the first step in making these graphics is to come to the new control panel that I drew in SolidWorks here. And you can see that this is a representation of the new control panel. I'm going to go ahead and right click that up and open this part so I get a good look at it here. And in SolidWorks, there's a button up here. It says File and Make Drawing from a Part. And that's what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to click on that. And I'm just going to use a blank uh, piece of paper and choose my settings here. And there it is. I'm just going to drop it right there. And you can see what it's done. It's just put a drawing like that. And I'm going to use this as my template inside Photoshop. So that means I need to save this off as a JPEG. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to go to File, Save, Save As. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to pick a JPEG here. And I'm going to navigate to where I'm keeping all my Photoshop stuff for my arcade art. Uh, I'll just call it uh, Control Top 2 and Save. There we go. Let's go ahead and close SolidWorks. Won't be needing it. Now I'm just going to go ahead and open my Photoshop. I'm using Photoshop 7, but this will work with any of the versions of Photoshop 7 and above. I'm going to go ahead and navigate to that image that I just created, the control top, which is here. And you can see it's here. And I'm going to use my crop tool, which is over here, and just make it nice and tight like that. Okay? Alright, I'm going to go ahead and resave that. And the next thing I need to do is to make a new document um, with the exact specifications of my SolidWorks um, drawing. And I know that my um, I wrote it down here. My control top is exactly 15.6 by 6.240. So I'm just going to go ahead and, first of all, I'm going to select all this. And I'm just going to copy it so it will be in memory. And then I'm going to make a new document. And I'm going to choose inches here. And I am going to say I want it 15.6 by... 6.240 and that's the exact um, dimensions of this piece of wood here. And I'm just going to bump the resolution up to uh, 200 and uh, I'm going to go ahead and OK that. OK, so here is a uh, a sized blank document. I'm going to go ahead and paste that control panel here. And you can see it's really small and, you know, when I blow this up, it's going to be quite small um, and the resolution is going to go um, kind of haywire. But it doesn't really matter because I'm just using this for a placement of the buttons. 
So on my first layer here, I'm going to go to transform here and scale. I'm going to grab one of these corners and I'm going to hold down my control button, or I'm sorry, my shift button, so I don't lose the perspective of it. And what I'm trying to do is make this black area the same size as this window. And I can just pull this around so it is exactly fitting perfect. Stretching a little bit more there. And also, you know, I can use the arrow keys on my keyboard to move it around slightly. Let's shrink that out. Now with the bitmap, it's not going to be a perfect match as with my CAD drawings, of course. But this is a pretty good representation, like say, of the buttons. Good enough so I can use it to draw my graphics around this, place my graphics around this, so I'm not cutting off any of the heads of it, the characters or anything like that. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. I've, uh, you know, manipulated my handles and I've used my arrows. And you can see the little black line here is on here now. And if I move it side to side, it's just hidden on each side there and then up and down the same way. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this tool, which places that and applies. And there it is. And I can go ahead and close this now. And I'm going to go ahead and start saving this. Save as. And I'm going to use it in the um, Photoshop PSD um, format. That way I'll have layers and I'll be able to change it later if I wish. So I'm going to put uh, Control Panel Top. And I'm going to make it number two. And I'm going to make sure that this is on for layers and save. Okay, this gives me a good base to work around. Now I can go ahead and start bringing in graphics. And then when I am done with this, I can just click on this eye and that will turn the, the template off. So I've already grabbed some of the graphics that I like. And you can see them here. Um, here's some of the characters that I had on my last one, as well as my Guru Brew graphic here. And that's the first one I want to start with because that also has a layer of black color that I like for the base. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this Guru Brew um, graphic in Photoshop by clicking it. It's here. And I would like to place that, like I said, as the background and then to have this part down in here somewhere or wherever we can play with that. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that it's the way I like it and I can always come in here under image adjust curve. I can pull these curves around and make it you know darker, lighter. I can come in here and grab the individual colors and change it however I like it to look as far as the darkness and lightness. And I can click on this preview button here to see the changes that I've made. Um, I think I like it just the way it is for now, so I'm going to go ahead and select all, and then I'm going to come up under edit and copy. And then I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the graphic that we were working on earlier, which is here. And I'm going to paste that into here. And what that's done is it's made two layers, you can see here. This is my original layer that shows me the layout, and then this is the one that went over the top. Now what we can do is we can switch these around. I can actually grab layer one and, grab and move it to layer two. And then I can click on layer one and I can make it a little bit transparent by pulling this over and that will show those little buttons through. And you can see how the whiteness of the paper goes away and I can just see those buttons start poking through. And that's about all the information I need is about right there, so that's fine. Now, I can go back to my layer 2, click on it, that'll make it active. And with my arrow tool, I can now move this around how I like it. Now I'm going to go ahead and stretch this a little bit. So I'm going to come up under Edit, Transform, and we're going to scale it. 
and I can grab a hold of these individual handles here and scale it until I get what I want. And a lot of times, you know, you just have to play with it and see what you like. There's no right or wrong way of doing this. I kind of like that right there. It's a little bit lower than I like it, but if I go any higher, I'm going to bump into this one button. I didn't have that trouble before, but now I do. Um, actually, I could bring it down like this, but that would leave a little white here at the top. But what I can do about that is apply this, and then I can just actually grab a hold of just this much of it, like that, with my dancing ants, and I can stretch with my scale tool just that much to cover up this white spot, and then I can apply it there. And then you can see that uh, it's one piece you now. So that's looking pretty good. I like how that lays in there just fine. Okay, let's start bringing some characters in. Okay, now that I have my base done, I'll show you real quick how I get the graphics for this. If you open up a web page, um, most of you are familiar with uh, Google graphics. I like Batman. Let's, let's look at Batman here. Ah, I spelled Batman wrong. You're Batman. Okay. And if you hit on Images button, you can look through and find the graphic that you want. And this is perfectly fine if you're just doing this for yourself. Now, if you're trying to sell this, do not do this. It's illegal to copy someone's work and then sell it for sure. But uh, if you wanted this Batman, you could click on it. And I could use my right hand mouse button and then copy the image and then open a Photoshop image, go to New, OK, and then go to Edit and Paste. And there's my Batman. Now, for this um, our marquee, I do not want any background because I have my background for the Guru Brew. So you can use this little lasso tool and the zoom tool and you can hold down on the alt key as you draw um, with this tool and go around the edge very carefully and i'm just doing it quick so you get an idea until you get all the way around and then you can hit the delete key and that will erase the background from the batman and you know i'm not taking a lot of time here to do this but this is how that you can get rid of the background for the graphics and just take your time and pick the ones that you'd like to use and once you're done then you can resave it off and um, I'll show you what I've got here I've already done this here's my Batman here and you'll get something that looks like this so once you get your uh, graphic such as this um, I like to use this uh, magic wand tool and I click on the white areas in the background and you can see how it picks up on Batman it's just the white areas and if you adjust this tolerance button um, it will adjust it so if you're not getting all the white like right around the shoes you can see um, it's not coming close to the shoes you can actually adjust these numbers in here and then click again of course and then it will give you more or less you can see it's getting a little more there Let's jack this up to like 40%. And then uh, pick it again. And you can see that it's a lot closer. Now, you may not be able to get all of it just using this tool, but that's okay. As, as long as you get most of it, I can show you how to get the rest later. So once you've selected all the white part, then you can go into this selection menu and then inverse it. That'll pick Batman. And then you can copy what you have. Then you can close this. You don't need it anymore. And you can use the paste function. There he is. And you can see I move him around wherever I'd like. Let's get the magnifying glass on him. And if I click on him, I've got these control knobs and I can actually bring them up and down. I can move them 
um, you know, proportionally or in proportionally um, to however I want to fit them in here. And I'm just moving this around. It's just an art thing, however you think it looks good. Um, don't want to cut his head off here. I don't mind his feet over the top of the guru, that's fine. And his cape's going to get cut off a little bit there by that one button. But uh, I kind of like that right there, so I can just click on this button again and apply it. Now, down here by the shoe, that's hardly noticeable, but you can see that white spot. Now, I can just go ahead and, at this point, just take my erase tool. Whoops. Let's pick a regular uh, brush for that. And then I can just erase those spots that I don't want, like that. And by carefully taking your time, you can get it exactly like you want it. And then when it comes time to printing this, you can come up to uh, the layer, this one, that has all the buttons on it for your template, and just turn it off, and then you can print it. This is how it will be done. And then every time you put a graphic on here, um, it will add it to these layers. Let's do another one. Let's go ahead and uh, come in here. Let's pick out this guy here. Click on him. Okay, we're going to take my magic wand tool again. And if you hold down shift, you get all the little white areas around here, you can see. And then I go to select, I go to inverse, and I copy. Okay. And then I can go ahead and paste it on here. Edit, paste, and then drag them to wherever I'd like them to be. In this case, I want them right over here in the corner. And you can also use your magnification tools get a good look at it. I'm going to go ahead and stretch him out here so he fits in here a little bit better. As long as he doesn't end up, you know, unproportionate too badly. It's perfectly acceptable to pull the graphics around in this manner. And I don't think it will be very noticeable. Okay, I kind of like that, just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and click this again and apply. Now you can see where these buttons are going to cut out his feet a little bit and his legs, but that's fine. So I'm going to go ahead and work my way around this and uh, fill all this in. Let's go ahead and do one more just so you, you got the hang of it here. We'll do, uh, we'll do this guy here. Open. Um, magic wand. Select, 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 select. Make sure you get all the white spots. Inverse. And then we're going to put him right up here, paste. Just drag him right over here like that. Make it bigger so you can see what's going on. And drag it up there nice and big. There. Bring his foot right down just like that. So that's how it's done. You just keep going around this thing. I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. And as soon as I get almost done, I'll be back. And uh, we'll finish up on some uh, closing words. So I'll meet you back here in just a minute. Okay, well, what do you think? This is pretty much what I came up with here. I just arranged the graphics. I took a little time here. Um, I think it looks pretty good. You can keep tweaking at it, but I'm pretty happy with this. And, you know, with the layers, you can um, come in here and click on these eyeballs and turn them off and on as you see fit. Not only that, but each graphic that I've added has added a new layer. Now, I wanted to show you here at the top with uh, these turtles and then the Batman. Notice how the foot on this turtle goes over the top of the Batman. Well, if we find out which uh, layer is the turtles, I think it's 11. Let, let me turn it off. Yep. Number 11 is the turtles, and then number 3 is Batman. Now, higher up on this list gives um, the layer precedence over the lower layers, 
So if I wanted this foot to go behind Batman, I would move Batman higher up in the chain. So um, let me grab Batman, which is number three here, and move that above 11, layer 11, and you'll see what happens to the foot on this turtle. Okay, now the foot is behind Batman, and that's what I wanted. So any layer that goes um, higher up the list has precedence um, and will go on top of uh, other items that are below it in the list. So the only other thing to do now is to fire up the printer and then turn this layer number one off, which is my templates, because I don't want this to print the uh, graphics um, for my buttons. And then print this on a color printer, and I'll have to do it in two sections because, you know, this thing is uh, about 16 inches long. And unless you have a really wide format printer or you could send it out to be printed, um, I'm just going to do it in two different um, pieces and then hook the pieces together, kind of like I did with this one. And then, you know, once it's under plexiglass, you won't even be able to tell that it's, it's uh, spliced. So I'm not real worried about that. But uh, that's it, guys. That's how I make the graphics. And that's also how I'm going to do it for the top marquee as well. So I hope you learned something, guys, from this. Uh, I appreciate you uh, tuning in and watching me. Give us a thumbs up, little comments. We always like reading those. So we'll see you next time. And take care of yourself. And we'll see you. Hey guys, this is Steve. Thanks for watching. Hey, don't forget to subscribe if you like this video and be sure to rate and comment. See ya.